So how's school, Hugo? How's your teacher? Good. He's tough, but he's funny, and we're learning a lot. Where's he from? He's from Canada. What about the students? How are they? Great. They're from all over the world: Korea, Saudi Arabia, China, Poland, and Chile. That's interesting. How's their English? It's hard to say. Some students are good at speaking, but not good at grammar. Some are just the opposite. What about you? How are you doing? I think I'm good at speaking, but writing and grammar are hard for me. My classmate Hao is just the opposite. He's good at writing and grammar, but he's not good at speaking. What about you, Elena? How are things with you? How are your classes? So far, so good. I'm like you. I'm good at speaking, but my grammar isn't very good, and my writing is so-so. Hey, look at this! It's a photo of me on my first day at work at Lacey's. When were you there? It was five years ago. So. How was your first day at work? Do you remember it? Uh huh. It was hard. I was nervous. My coworkers were busy, and I was afraid of my boss. I wasn't sure of anything. And now? I like my job. What about you? How was your first day at work? Great. I was relaxed and happy. My boss was wonderful, but my second month wasn't good. Why? My boss and a coworker were let go. My new boss and new coworker weren't helpful. It was hard for a few weeks, but now it's okay. Hi, Ella. This is Maria. I'm at Grandma's house. How was the interview at DJ Drugs? I'm sure you were great. Call us. We're here all evening. Hi, Ella. This is Emiko. Thank you so much. The cupcakes were delicious. See you tomorrow at the restaurant. I hope Dave can come. This call is for Ella Fernandez. This is Sam Hess at DJ Drugs. It was a pleasure to meet you yesterday. Please call me at five 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 four eight nine. Hi, darling. Sorry I missed your call. Dad and I were out with Aunt Mona. It was her seventieth birthday. Was your interview today? How was it? I hope you weren't nervous. I'm sure they loved you. Okay, call me back. Love you. Ella, this is Dave. I'm sorry I wasn't at the party for Emiko. My meeting was over early, but I was stuck in Ottawa. The weather there was terrible, and all the planes were late. I'm home now. Please call. I miss you. He was a famous painter and photographer. He was born on August sixth, nineteen twenty-eight, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. 
He was a quiet, shy child who loved drawing, photography, and movies. His parents were immigrants from Slovakia. His father, a construction worker, died when the artist was fourteen. After college in 1959, he went to New York City. He became a commercial artist there. In 1961, he started to use things like Campbell's soup cans in his art. He called his art pop art. He also painted famous people like Marilyn Monroe, Che Guevara, Jackie Kennedy, Mao Zedong. And Elizabeth Taylor. In the 1970s, this artist focused on photography. He carried a camera with him all the time. He died in 1987. Do you know his name? It's Andy Warhol. Hello. Hi, it's Soon He. Soon He, how's your trip? Where are you now? I'm in Colorado, in Mesa Verde National Park. Wow, Mesa Verde, how is it? It's awesome. Mesa Verde is so unusual. There are ancient homes in the mountains. What are they like? Very different. Today I was in Spruce Tree House. I'm sending you a photo. Got it. It was huge. There were 130 rooms for 60 to 80 people. Wow. How's your hotel? Is it nice? Not really, but it's clean. And it's near the park. How's the weather? Well, it's cold, but there's one good thing about that: the park isn't crowded. Winter is a good time to travel here. It's reasonable and not very crowded. This country is in Asia. It's between Japan. And China, it's near Mongolia. What country is it? This country is in South America. It's between Colombia and Peru. What country is it? This country is near Africa. It's an island. It's near Mozambique. What country is it? This country is in Europe. It's between Portugal and France. What country is it? This country is in Asia. It's between Vietnam and Thailand. What country is it? This country is in Central America. It's between Mexico and Honduras. What country is it? Change your lifestyle. Begin now. Join Mia's early morning spa. It's open from six to nine a.m. on weekdays. Here's a typical morning at Mia's. Take a yoga class at six a.m. Then at seven, have breakfast with your yoga teacher and the other students. Enjoy fresh fruit, whole grain bread, and yogurt. Drink freshly squeezed juices and herbal tea. At eight, get a European massage. At eight forty-five. Take a shower, then go to work. Join today and get two weeks free. 
What's that? It's a website of Independence Day celebrations from different countries. Look at this photo. It's beautiful. Where is it? India. They celebrate Independence Day on August 15th. Why those colors? White, green, and orange are the colors of their flag. And here's a photo from Cambodia. Is that Phnom Penh Independence Monument? Yes, it is. Students gather there and fly balloons on Independence Day. When is that? November 9th. This next photo's from the United States. That's when people decorate with the stars and stripes. What does that mean, the stars and stripes? That's what people call the U.S. flag. The flag has red and white stripes and white stars on a blue background. So every July 4th, you see red, white, and blue everywhere. And look, this last photo is from Bolivia. Every year on August 6th and 7th, Bolivia has a two-day Independence Day festival with marches, parades, and carnivals. Some women in Bolivia wear traditional clothes with wide skirts and bowler hats and dance in the streets of La Paz. So, Andrea, I'm sure I can find a good roommate for you. Great. I have just a few more questions. Okay. Tell me, Andrea, do you like parties? Not really. I like to see one friend at a time. I also like to be alone, and I am a very private person. Okay. That's good to know. Do you listen to music? Yes. I love classical music. I listen to it a lot. How about sports? Are you into sports? No. Sometimes I go to the gym, but not often. Finally, what time do you study? And where? I study at night, in my room. Thank you. So, Mia, tell me about your dream. Okay, Dr. Fox. I have a very important test. I can't find the room it's in. I ask a man, where is the room? What does the man say? He says, you're in the wrong building. But I know I'm in the right building. Then I wake up. Hmm, let me see. Mia, do you have a lot of stress right now? Yes, I do. What kind of stress do you have? Well, I'm in school and I need to choose a major. I want to be a music major, but my father wants me to be a science major. Ah, that's it. In your dream, the two buildings are two paths, music and science. The man in the dream is your father. He wants you to study science. You tell him you want to study music. This pizza place is awful. There aren't any tablecloths and the placemats are dirty. You're right. There aren't any napkins either. There's a busboy here somewhere, but I don't see him now. Well, I need a knife and fork. There are some knives and forks on that table. Oh, no. They aren't clean. Boy, 
It's hot in here. There isn't even a fan. Oh my gosh, you won't believe this. What is it? Well, there's a mouse over there, near the wall. What? Ugh! There are two mice. Let's leave. What about our food? Let the mice have it. They're hungry too. How about some Chinese food? Well, there's only one Chinese food restaurant nearby, but it's expensive. There are a lot of other restaurants, though. Today is Sunday. Are they open? They're all open seven days a week. Well, there's a nice Mexican place over there. Where? Over there, next to the diner. I know the place. It's good and not expensive. Let's go. Excuse me. Is there a mall around here? Uh huh. There's a mall about two miles north of here. It's on this street. Great. Uh, do you know? Is there a place to get towels? I'm sure there is. Try a department store. There are a couple of them there. How are the prices? Well, it depends on the store, but there are some really good buys. What about places to eat? Is there a good Italian restaurant? I'm not sure, but there's a food court. It's on the third level. And there are at least ten different places to eat. What about parking? No problem. There are lots of parking spaces. I never have trouble finding a space. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. Just one thing. They're fixing the road about a mile up ahead. So there's always a lot of traffic on the way to the mall, and there isn't another way to drive there. Oh well, it's just two miles. I'll walk there. Is that Maria's? I think so. Is that Maria? No, it's her sister Carmen. They look alike. We have two Marias in our class. It's a popular name. Is this your partner's phone? No, it's my phone. Do you like to work with a partner? Sometimes. Sometimes we work with partners. And sometimes we work in small groups. We do too. Jasmine, your family's bikes are all the same. How can you tell them apart? They look the same because we got them at a big sale, but they're not exactly alike. Look, mine has a basket in the front. Oh, I see it now. But the others are the same. No, that one is my brother Johnny's bike. His has a small license plate in the back. Oh yeah, and his has a higher seat. But the other two are the same. Look carefully. That one, the one next to Johnny's bike, is Amy's. She's my sister. Hers has a bag in the back. The rest of ours don't. You're right. Whose is the last one? That one belongs to my two uncles, Roger and Ted. They don't ride much, so they share the bike. Their bike has a horn. What are you looking at? A website about a dolphin named Kelly.
She's amazing. All dolphins are smart. I saw a dolphin show in Florida. Those dolphins could do all kinds of things. They could play basketball. They could throw and catch a ball. They could even paint pictures. Well, Kelly is even smarter. Listen to this story. Kelly is at a marine institute in Mississippi. All the dolphins there are in pools. Sometimes people throw papers into the pools. That's terrible. I know, but the dolphins hold on to the paper, and their trainer gives them a fish for each paper they give to the trainer. And all the dolphins can do that. Yup, they're all smart, but Kelly is a genius. Why's that? Kelly saves the paper under a rock. Then she tears the paper and gives a piece of paper to her trainer. He then gives her a fish. She gives him another piece of the paper. She gets another fish, so Kelly gets a lot of fish for one piece of paper. Wow, she is smart. She could figure out a way to get more food from her trainer. You're right. She is a genius. You're doing great. I feel good too, Doctor Lamb. When can I return to work? Next week. And when can I drive? Wait another week. Take the train next week. Okay. But remember, watch your diet. Don't eat heavy food and dessert. Can I eat in restaurants? Sure. Just watch what you order. May I help you? Thanks. I'd like to make an appointment with Ms. Stein. She's free next Tuesday at ten. Here are some booklets about nutrition. You may take them home and read them. Thanks. Do you want them back? No. You may keep them. Your fish comes with a salad. Okay, can I have the dressing on the side? Of course. And can we see the dessert menu? Bob, you're on a diet. You can't have dessert. But I can look at the desserts and dream about them. May I help you? Yes, thanks. I'm Narai Atatürk. I have an appointment with Doctor Lee for two. Hi, Ms. Atatürk. May I see your health insurance card? After Nurai sees Doctor Lee, he gives her a diet to follow. Okay, Nurai. Here's your diet. Any questions? Can I eat snacks? Yes, but you can only have light snacks. Can I have ice cream? No, you can't. But you can have low-fat yogurt instead. May I call you with questions? Certainly, but don't worry. Everything is on these papers. Just read the diet and follow the directions. You'll feel better in no time. Thanks, Doctor Lee. Good afternoon, Sandra. How are you feeling? Good, thanks. Uh, are the test results in? Yes, they are. It seems you're allergic to peanuts. Peanuts? Really? Does that mean I can't ever have peanuts again? For now, you can't eat peanuts. And you can't have anything with peanuts in it. Oh, you mean like 
peanut butter? That's right. No peanut butter. What about pad thai? I love pad thai. Sorry, that's also not allowed because it has peanuts in it. Actually, you need to start reading the ingredients of every food you buy, and you need to tell waiters at restaurants. Wow, this is serious. Well, yes and no. You can eat lots of delicious dishes that don't have peanuts in them, and you're not allergic to anything else. Actually, peanut allergies are the most common allergy in the United States. Really? Hey, George, where are you? I'm standing in front of Joey's restaurant. I don't see you. I'm wearing my red jacket and sunglasses, and I'm carrying a bag of chips. I'm hard to miss. Do you see me now? Oh yeah, now I see you. I'm walking towards you now. Do you see me? Yes. Hi, Sarah. It's Ali. I'm at the bank. But I don't see you. Well, I'm in front of the bank too. I'm wearing a black sweater and a gray skirt. I still don't see you. I'm carrying a backpack. That's strange. No one is here. Hmm. Which bank are you standing in front of? Nova Bank. Why? Well, I'm standing in front of Pacific Bank. Nova Bank and Pacific are on the same street. I'm down the street. Oh, I'll be with you in a couple of minutes. Now I can see Pacific Bank. Hi, Don. How are you feeling? Are you feeling any better? <laughs> no, I'm not. Are you taking the medicine? Yes, I am. <clears throat> Where are you calling from? I'm at an Italian restaurant. Don, listen to this. Meryl Streep is eating here too. No kidding. Who is she eating with? I think she's with her daughter. I'm not sure. Are people asking for her autograph? No, nobody's bothering her, but everyone knows she's here. Well, when you pass her table, say "Bon appetit." Say it the same way she said it in the movie Julie and Julia. Hello. Hi, Gina. It's Joy. Hey, Joy. Good to hear from you. How are you doing? How's life in Miami? Good so far. We're all doing well. How's Chicago? Same as usual. It's snowing today. Are you getting a lot of sun? Yes, but not today. It's raining today. We're all watching movies. I know you all love movies. What are you watching? Well. My mom is watching the best exotic marigold hotel. I know she's enjoying it. I hear her laughing. She's crazy about the actors in it. Where is she watching it? On the balcony. She's sitting on the balcony and watching the movie on her iPad. 
And Bill is watching a documentary on the big TV in the living room. What about the kids? Brian and Ella are at the Cineplex movie theater. Brian and his friend are watching a new action film. And Ella and her friend are watching an animated film. Are they alone? Oh, no. Ella's friend's parents are there. What about you? I'm watching a love story. There's nothing like a good romance on a rainy day. I'm watching Sleepless in Seattle on the small TV in our bedroom. Listen, I have to take another call. Enjoy the movie. I'll call back later. Love you. Bye, Gina. Bye, Joy. What are you doing? I'm checking Instagram. Look, that's Joy Lynn from high school. She has three kids now. The twins are wearing pirate costumes, and the older girl is wearing a princess dress. The boy looks like Joy, doesn't he? Yes, I think they all look like Joy. Do you use social media a lot? No, not really. I prefer to text or email friends. I believe it's more personal. Also, I worry about my privacy. Do you worry about your privacy? Sometimes, but I love to connect with my friends on social media. I'm worried about Tim. He isn't doing well in school. He was always a good student, but this term he's playing games or texting friends all the time. I think he's failing Spanish. Bob and I are talking about getting him a Spanish tutor. What does Tim want? I don't know. Right now he's playing some new game. He loves those computer games. I think he's becoming addicted to them. My friend's daughter was like that. Now she owns her own company. Hi, Karina. This is Bob. Please send me a copy of the Smith Report. Thanks. Hi, Mom. It's Lydia. I'm staying late at school. We're practicing for the concert. We're beginning to sound good. I'll text you when I leave so you can pick me up from the train station. Hi, Karina. It's Natalia. I know it's late. But I need to make final plans for your trip on Thursday. Check your email. I sent some info about possible flights. Let me know what works. Also, do you need me to do anything? And good luck with your presentation. Hi, Karina. It's Aunt Gina. I'm looking for a smartphone, and I need your advice. Don't laugh, but I want a lot of features. I know what I said about smartphones a few years ago, but I was wrong. I'll speak to you later. Love you. Any mail? Yes. A postcard from Marta. How is she? Great. She was in Japan for ten days, but she's back in Mexico now. Did she stay with her Japanese friends in Tokyo? She stayed with friends for a week, 
Then she stayed at a real kan for two nights. That's a traditional Japanese inn. She loved it, but it was expensive. What else? Well, she visited temples in Kyoto on Saturday and walked all over the city. Did she practice Japanese? Yes. She practiced Japanese with tour guides and shopkeepers. Sometimes they wanted to practice English with her. They didn't realize that English is Marta's second language. That's funny. How did she travel? Did she rent a car? No. She used public transportation to get around. The trains and subways are easy to use. Sounds like she enjoyed her trip. But there's something I don't understand. Did she write all that on a postcard? No. I called her this afternoon. We talked for a half an hour. As a young child, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. My grandfather loved to play with me. I was six when my grandfather died. A few months before he died, he gave me a beautiful blue blanket. I loved that blanket because it reminded me of my grandfather. But after a couple of years, the blanket didn't look good. I didn't want to throw it away, so my mother made it into a bag. I used it to carry my books to school for a couple of years. Then the bag tore. I didn't want to throw it away, so my mom made it into a pencil case. One day, I lost the pencil case. I felt terrible. My friend said, forget about it. I couldn't forget about it. I wrote about it instead. Last week, my son found my story in the attic of our house. My son asked about the blanket, and he asked about my grandfather. I felt very good. I felt that my grandfather and his blanket are not forgotten. When did you write your first book? In 1980. It came out in 1982. Did you always want to be a writer? No, I didn't. For many years, I wanted to be a graphic artist. Were you always good at writing? Well, my first grade teacher wrote, Cheryl is good at everything except making up stories. Did you like your first grade teacher? I can't remember. When did you start to write? After I graduated from college, I became a journalist. How long did you work as a journalist? I worked for newspapers for 14 years. Why did you start writing romance novels? I read one and said, I can do this too. Who helped you the most? My agent did. She was there for me from the beginning. How did you feel when your books became popular? I felt terrific. I remember the first time I saw someone with my book. I said, That's my book. The woman looked at me and said, No, it's not. It's mine. I said, No, no, no. It's my book. I wrote it. What movie did you see last night, John? 
Shakespeare in Love. I heard that it was good. Did you like it? Yes, it was very good. Where did the story take place? In England? Yes, in London, in the late 16th century. What was the story about exactly? It was about William Shakespeare's true love. Was it a true story? Was it based on Shakespeare's life? No, the story was made up. It's a romantic comedy. Mark Norman and Tom Stoppard wrote it. In the movie, Shakespeare fell in love. Viola, the woman he loves, gave him the idea for the play Romeo and Juliet. Who was in the movie? The movie starred Gwyneth Paltrow and Joseph Fiennes. It came out in 1998. I know the plot of Romeo and Juliet. It was very sad. What happened? There were two lovers, Romeo and Juliet. They fell in love, but they couldn't marry because of their families. Their families were enemies. So how did it end? Are you sure you want to know the ending? Sure. Well, in the last scene, they died in each other's arms. Let's watch Win a Fortune. It's on in two minutes. Okay. Good evening and welcome to Win a Fortune. With us tonight are Jim De Silva from Naples, Florida, and Amy O'Donnell from Racine, Wisconsin. Jim, Amy, press the button as soon as you know the answer. Then give three more correct answers on that topic, and you win $5,000. Okay, now, our first question is in the field of art. Who painted the famous painting, The Night Watch? Okay, Amy. Rembrandt. Good. Next, in what century did Rembrandt live? The 17th century. Great. You're doing very well. Now, where was he born? In what country? In Holland. Good. Now, you have just one more question to answer. What is Rembrandt's family name? Hmm. I... Uh... I don't know. It's Van Rijn. I'm sorry, Amy. It's Rembrandt Van Rijn. Rijn is spelled R-I-J-N. Hey, you're good, Roger. Our next question is in the field of music. Who did John Lennon marry? Jim? Yoko Ono. Correct. Now, what was the name of John Lennon's group? The Beatles. Good. Now, two more correct answers, and you win. Where did the Beatles come from? Liverpool, England. Right again. Now for our final question. When did the Beatles make their last appearance together? 1965? He's wrong. It was 1966. I'm sorry, Jim. It was 1966. You're pretty smart, Roger. Why don't you go on the show? Maybe I will, Carolina. Maybe I will. 
Let's get the paper. I wrote a letter to the editor, and I want to see if it's in the paper. What did you write about? That new twenty-story building on West Street. Are you for or against it? I'm for it. Why? Well, there aren't enough apartments in the area. Many young people are moving away because they can't find a place to live. The new building is going to have two hundred apartments. Oh. And it's going to have great facilities, a fitness center, and a swimming pool. That's great. Can anyone use the facilities? That's what they say. And there are gonna be shops on the street level. But there's gonna be more noise and traffic. It's not gonna be so bad. It's certainly gonna spoil the view for people in nearby homes. That's true, but I still think it's gonna improve the area. So, Laura, when will you finish your article about the future? It won't be ready until 4 p.m., but I think you'll like it. You interviewed Dr. Riker. Right? Yes, I did. He says computers will help us stay healthy. Oh yeah? How's that? In the future, we'll have computers inside our bodies. They'll check our blood sugar and blood pressure. We'll know if we have a problem right away. Will diabetes and heart disease disappear? No, but people won't die from those diseases so often, and people will probably live longer. And when will this happen? In about five years, I think. Wow. Did you hear the lecture last week? No. What was it about? The future. According to Professor Kramer, in the year 2100, there will be cities in the ocean. We'll take trips to the moon, and we'll learn most things from computers. By 2100, we'll all be gone. Did people like his lecture? Yes, they did. They always do. He knows how to make any subject fascinating. Good evening. Here with me now are our two lucky lottery winners, Susan Karens and Jim Morris. So, Susan, now that you're so rich, what are you gonna do? Well, I'll probably leave my job. I'm a waitress. My customers are nice, but after fifteen years, I'm ready to see new places. Will you travel? I think so. I'll probably go to the moon. But I'll buy a house here on Earth with room for my friends and relatives. Sounds wonderful. How about you, Jim? Will you leave your job? No, I won't. I love being a school bus driver. What will you do with all your money? I think I'll give it away. What was that? You'll give it away? That's right. I want it to go to people who really need the money. I'll ask people to write to me and explain why they need the money, and I'll choose the people who need it most. Wow, that's very unusual and generous. 
Uh, what about your wife and family? Do you have any idea what they'll say? I'm sure my wife will want me to keep the money, and my family will be angry. But they'll get over it. So, ladies and gentlemen watching at home, get out your pens and start writing those letters. A letter to Jim may get you a lot of money. Jack, your suitcase is so heavy. Are you sure you need everything? Oh, yes. I'm pretty sure I need everything. Boots? We may go mountain climbing. Crater Lake National Park has some great trails. Well, in that case, I'll take mine too. What about this raincoat? It might rain. Do you need two hats? Yes. I have a sun hat because it might be very sunny, and a rain hat in case... I know. It might rain. Jack, you packed two heavy books. When are you going to read them? At night. Sometimes I wake up during the night. I like to have something to read. And why the sports jacket? You won't need to dress for dinner. Just in case we go to a fancy restaurant. Well, you know, these days the airlines are very strict. You may have to pay extra if your suitcase is too heavy. Oh, really? You know, I may not need so much. I might not take the jacket. And maybe I'll forget about this book. And maybe... That's a good idea. Do you like acting? Yes, I do. I really enjoy performing in front of people. Is it hard to find work as an actor? Very hard. Many people want to become actors. You need to have talent, patience, and luck. Do you ever think about changing careers? No. I refuse to give up my dream. I keep trying out for parts. I think I'm a great actor, and I plan on showing the world. Good afternoon. My name is Henry Trin. I want to tell you a few things about my job. I'm a designer for XZO Design Company and I love going to work. At the moment, I'm designing a logo for an athletic shoe company. Logos are really important because people remember companies with good logos. Think about Apple and Coca-Cola. I'm sure you know their logos. When I design a logo, I have two rules. First, I want to keep it simple. And second, I try to match the colors to the product. For designers, color is very important. For example, studies show that when people see red, they want to eat more. So, Many restaurants, like McDonald's, use red in their logos. When people see blue, they feel calm. So banks like to use blue because it makes their customers feel safe and secure. The psychology of color is not always easy. Men and women have different opinions about colors and different cultures have different opinions about colors, too. 
When a business hires me, I try to ask a lot of questions and I try to understand the business and the customers. Designers usually like to work in teams and good design teams make a lot of money. So for those of you who like art and design, why don't you think about becoming a designer? Where's the party? At Rectangle's Restaurant. Are the Garcias coming? Yes, they are. He's a chef, right? Yes, he is. His wife was an accountant in Spain, but now she's a chef too. I hope they like the food at Rectangle's. I'm sure they'll like the atmosphere and the service. I hope they like the food too. Where do they work? She works at a Spanish restaurant and he works at an Italian one. Where are their restaurants? The Spanish restaurant is in downtown Manhattan. The Italian restaurant is in Queens. Could you bring some more bread, please? Certainly. Here you go. Anything else? Some water, please. With ice. Would you like some water, too, ma'am? No, thanks. I don't want any water, but I'd like a glass of ginger ale. Sure. Also, could we have some more butter? Of course. Do you have any fish dishes? I don't eat meat, and I don't see any fish on the menu. I'm sorry, we don't have fish, but we have some delicious vegetarian dishes. Hi, you're early. The party isn't until eight. I know. I'm here to help. I have my car. Can I get you anything? Thanks. Yes. We need soda and chips, and a jar of hot salsa, and three cans of tuna fish. How about ice? Good idea. Get some ice. Okay. I'll be back soon. Thirty minutes later. Here you are. Here's the soda, the chips, the salsa, the tuna, and the ice. There's a small problem. A problem? What's the matter? This is tuna for cats. Oh, no. It's okay. I can return it. I feel sick. Why? You didn't eat it. Not today. But this is the tuna I usually eat. Meow, meow. Are you turning into a cat? Can you tell me how to make your berry dessert drink? Sure. First, buy a can of chickpeas, a container of orange juice, a pint of fresh strawberries, and a jar of honey. And then what do you do? I put the can of chickpeas, one and a half cups of orange juice, two cups of strawberries, and two tablespoons of honey in a blender. When it's smooth, I add six ice cubes. Then I blend it again. It's delicious. This baklava is delicious, Murat. Thanks. It's my mom's recipe. Is she willing to share it? Sure. Well, I'm taking notes. Okay. First, preheat the oven to 350 degrees and put butter in a large pan. You need a cup of butter for that. Got it. Then mix a little cinnamon and a lot of nuts. Wait a second. Don't say a little and a lot. 
Give me the exact amounts. Okay. Mix a teaspoon of cinnamon and a pound of nuts. Chop the nuts. Is that a pound of nuts? Right. Then place two sheets of phyllo dough in a pan and. Ah,、uh, what's phyllo dough? It's a very thin dough. These days, you can buy phyllo dough at any supermarket. That's good. So put two sheets of phyllo dough in the pan and put the cinnamon and nut mixture on it. Then add more phyllo dough and more cinnamon and nuts. Continue until you use up all the nut mixture. Is that it? Layers of dough and the nut mixture. Well, that's the main part. Then bake the baklava for 50 minutes. While the baklava is baking, combine one cup of sugar and one cup of water in a small pan. Bring it to a boil. Then stir in a little honey and a little vanilla extract. Oh, I forgot. You want the exact amount. Stir in half a cup of honey and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Reduce the heat and simmer for twenty minutes. Let me repeat: one cup of sugar, one cup of water, and a cup of honey. No, half a cup of honey. Oh, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Right. Then remove the baklava from the oven and put the syrup on top. Cool it completely before you serve it. Thanks so much. I'll let you know how it turns out. No, you won't. What do you mean? You'll bring me some baklava to taste. Oh, of course. Well, what did you think of the three apartments? Honestly, the first, the one on Maple Street, was kind of small. It didn't have enough space, and there were too few closets. But it was on a beautiful street. Okay, how about the second one, the one across from the park? That was the right size and had a great view, but there was too much noise, and there were too many people all around. Did you like the last apartment? Yes, I liked it a lot. There was enough space for us, and there wasn't too much noise. I'd like to go there again. How about you, Sandy? What did you think of it? I agree with Ben. The only problem was the kitchen; it had too few cabinets. That's true, but I can build some cabinets. There was enough room for them. Okay, I'll make an appointment to see the apartment again. Is Saturday morning okay? Yes, that would be great. Thank you. Kaori, show. I have a business meeting in Japan. I just got my plane ticket. Now I've got a lot of questions. Well, I hope we can help. First of all, should I bring cash on my trip? Or can I use a credit card everywhere? You can use credit cards in major stores, but if you shop at small stores, cash is better. So I say bring some cash. Show what do you think? I agree. Definitely bring cash. Okay, that was easy. Now I know that people bow in Japan. I feel funny bowing. 
But do you think I ought to bow when I meet someone? No, it's not necessary for you to bow. You're a foreigner, and Japanese know that it's not your custom. And a lot of younger Japanese don't bow these days either. What about when I enter a home? Should I remove my shoes? Yes, you should. You will find some slippers near the door. Put them on and leave your shoes by the door. Okay. Should I learn a few phrases in Japanese? I can't learn very much. Is it worth it? I think so. You should learn some phrases because people will appreciate the effort. Well, I'm sure I'll have more questions before I leave. Thanks so much. Wait, there's one important thing you forgot. What? This is really important. Nobody goes to Japan without a translator. I can help you with that. You'd better get a ticket for me. <laughs> Very funny. Hi, Ali. How can I help you? I'm planning on getting an MBA after college. Can you tell me what steps I need to take now? Well, let me see. You're in your second year. And you're majoring in psychology. Yes. Is that okay? Yes. You don't have to major in business or economics to get a master's in business administration, but you should take some courses in those areas. I plan to take economics next term. Very good. You also have to take the GMAT. That's a test of your ability in English and math, and it's a requirement for all business schools. It's very important. Any other questions? Do I have to go to graduate school right after college, or can I work for a while? You don't have to go to business school right after college. Many schools actually prefer students to get some work experience first. Really? Yes. One more thing. You have to get good grades. I see you're doing well in all your classes. So keep up the good work and you'll be fine. Thank you. Wow. Fogville looks different. You can thank our mayor. He's working very hard to make this a green city. Really? How? Well, it's a lot cleaner than it was. How did that happen? We pay a $40 fine if we drop a piece of paper on the street. Well, it's working. The place is spotless. And downtown looks livelier than before. That's because more people are using the area. And look at the buses. They're bigger, and the seats are more comfortable. There are more buses and more bus stops, too. These days, it's a lot easier to take the bus than a car. Are the buses electric? Yes, they are. I guess the air is cleaner than before, too. It is. As you can see, there aren't many cars around here. How come? Parking is harder than before. Actually, it's almost impossible to park. So no one drives. We have bicycle lanes. And many people are moving downtown and walking or biking everywhere. Remember West Park? I remember it wasn't very safe. 
You should see it now. It's cleaner and safer, and there are vegetable gardens. People can get a little land and do some gardening. How about East Park? Unfortunately, East Park is worse than before. It's more dangerous than ever. It's also dirtier than before. But in time, I'm sure our mayor will fix it up. You really like the mayor. Yes, I do. Who is he? My uncle, Paul Steiner. You're ready to give a speech. You have a good beginning, an introduction that your audience will pay attention to, and a good ending or conclusion. You also have a couple of good jokes. What else should you do? Here are some more tips to help make a good speech a great one. First of all, remember to look directly at a few people in the audience. Your eyes can make your audience feel involved. Second, speak confidently. Show your audience that you really believe the words you're saying. Third, dress appropriately. Remember, your audience will be looking at you the entire time. Fourth, speak freely and use natural language. Don't read your speech, and don't show a PowerPoint slide with a lot of writing on it. Finally, summarize your talk. And thank your audience sincerely. So Haley, how was the party? I had a great time, but there were problems with the place. The air conditioner didn't work well, so it was too hot in the room. How was the music? Good, but the refreshments were awful. The appetizers were too salty, and the desserts were too sweet, and there wasn't enough ice, so the drinks weren't cold enough. Too bad. Also, there weren't enough chairs. Most of us had to stand, and the room wasn't big enough. It was big enough for twenty people. But thirty-five people came, but I still had a lot of fun. Your mom sent me a picture of you, and you looked very beautiful. I just wondered about those shoes. Weren't your heels too high? How could you dance? They were very comfortable, and I danced all night. Jeff got a great job offer in Lakeville, but I don't want to move. Why not? Well, the schools in Lakeville aren't as good as the schools here in Middletown. But you don't have children. We may one day, and in Lakeville the shopping isn't as convenient as it is here. Shopping in Lakeville is just as convenient as shopping here. Sometimes I even go there to shop. Well, the parks aren't as beautiful as they are in Middletown, and the people aren't as friendly as the people here. The people in Lakeville are just as friendly as the people here. Three of my coworkers live in Lakeville, and they're great. How can you say that people there aren't friendly? What's the real reason you don't want to move? Well, my family. Everyone is here. I feel bad because Jeff really wants to take the job. 
but I just don't want to move away from them. Colin feels very bad that we didn't promote him. I know. He's very smart, and he really wants to be the assistant manager, but we couldn't give him the job. I agree. He's just too critical. Yesterday, he said the new receptionist is too talkative. Everyone else loves her. And the day before that, he complained about the new chairs. The new chairs? I think they're comfortable and very beautiful. Colin always finds something to complain about, and nobody's work is good enough for him, and he's not very helpful. No one goes to him with a problem. Yeah. I feel good about Maria, though. She's very smart and confident, and she brings out the best in others. Also, Maria always does what she says she will do. Colin is also not as reliable as Maria. You can't always depend on him. Sometimes he says he'll do something, and he doesn't. And he's not as punctual as Maria either. Maria is always on time. Colin is often late. Maria is also very enthusiastic. She makes people feel good about themselves and the company. I think we made a good choice. I agree. Maria is helpful, enthusiastic, and reliable. She's a real team player. Good evening, and welcome to How Much Do You Know About Nature? Where guests answer questions and win money. Tonight, back for the third week, is Olivia Lamb. You know the rules. Yes, Drew. Five seconds to answer the question. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Pick a card. Well, I see you picked the category of animals. Our first question for $1,000 is, which land animal has the longest gestation period? In other words, which baby stays inside its mother for the longest time? I think it's the Asian elephant. You're right! The Asian elephant is born after a gestation period of 19 to 22 months. Imagine that! The mother is pregnant for 22 months. For that answer, you win $1,000. Thank you. You're very welcome. Next. For $5,000, what is the fastest land animal? That's an easy one. The cheetah. You're right again. They can run up to 70 miles an hour. You now have $6,000. Now... For $10,000, our third question. What's the loudest land animal? The loudest land animal is the howler monkey. You can hear this monkey from three miles away. Excellent! You've just won $10,000 for a total of $16,000. Wow! That's great! 
And our last question is for twenty thousand dollars. This creature kills more than a million people each year. Is it the mosquito that carries malaria? Yes, it is. Fantastic! And for that, you win twenty thousand dollars for a grand total of thirty-six thousand dollars. Congratulations, Olivia.